Five Common Misconceptions About Religion by Robert M. Ellis Number one. Many people tend to assume unnecessarily that religions are essentially about belief. And by belief, they generally mean absolute belief. They even use the word faith as equivalent to religion. And what they mean by faith in this particular way is absolute belief. But there's a great deal more to religion than simply belief, particularly absolute belief. The great scholar of religious studies, Ninian Smart, when analysing religion, came up with six dimensions of religion. These were simply based on his study of what religion involved, what it includes. The first of those dimensions was the doctrinal. That, of course, does have a lot to do with belief. But there are five other dimensions to religion that he identified. The moral, the narrative, the experiential, the social and the ritual. The moral dimension of a religion does not just consist in beliefs about what is right or wrong. Rather, it consists of cultural expectations about how people should actually behave. Stories, examples, like the example here of the Good Samaritan, which has found its way through Christian culture, it doesn't just consist of a set of rules about how to live. It consists of a story. It is stories that form the narrative dimension of religion. The vast majority of most religious scriptures consist of stories the Bible, the Mahabharata, the Quran are full of stories of various kinds. Stories are not the same as prescriptions of belief. Stories are ambiguous and embodied. They're about what people do. The experiential dimension of religion consists, for example, of visions or mystical experiences, or perhaps more everyday examples of prayer or meditation. The meaning of such experiences goes beyond what can be easily encompassed under religious belief and the reduction of such experiences to formulae in religious belief remove what's actually important about them for the people who have those experiences. The social dimension of religions consists of religious communities where people make friendships and support each other. Human solidarity of this kind does not have to depend on absolute beliefs, whether in the context of religion or anywhere else. The ritual dimension of religion involves the performance of certain repeated symbolic actions that are very meaningful for the people involved. Again, that meaning does not necessarily have to be tied to beliefs, let alone absolute beliefs. The meaning itself is the point of the ritual and people can participate in that ritual whether or not they hold certain beliefs. So from all these different dimensions of religion, you should be able to see that there is much more to religion than simply belief. Misconception number two, that religion is meaningless without belief. That is, that religion gets its actual meaning from belief and would in some way be gutted or meaningless without it. But this whole way of thinking is dependent on a certain truth dependent or representational view of meaning that's been promoted by certain Western philosophers. It's not necessary to take that view of meaning. Meaning does not depend on a relationship to truths or beliefs about how things are out there. Rather meaning exists for us in our experience prior to any such relationship. Meaning for us depends not on relationships to truths out there, but rather on embodiment. That is, on a relationship that we set up, an association between links in our brain and experiences that we have in our bodies from early childhood. We start off with relatively simple associations 
and build these up into more and more complexity through systems of metaphor as we get older. Based on these false assumptions then, we often ask ourselves the wrong questions as regards the meaning of religion or religions. For example, we ask about Islam, well what does Islam in general mean in the abstract? But when we're thinking about the meaning of Islam, we should start with the meaning for a person who is a Muslim, even a specific man at prayer, engaged in Muslim prayer. What does it mean for him? What are the links, the associations that he goes through as he goes through the act of prayer? That's what Islam means to him in his embodied state. Misconception number three, that religion depends on the existence of supernatural beings. For some reason, so many of us are obsessed with existence and non-existence the debates between theists and atheists and so on. But the existence or non-existence of abstractions is completely irrelevant to us. It's the meaning and the experience that are engaged in religion that are important to us. The psychologist Carl Jung, in his theory of archetypes, provides quite an alternative way of understanding religion that allows all these fruitless debates about existence and non-existence, supernatural and natural, to simply fall away. The Jungian framework of explanation can help us to understand that when we think we encounter supernatural beings, this is a process of projection. It's almost as though the world is a screen and we think we see the things that are pictures projected on that screen in the world itself. But the processes that drive us to believe in these projections are not to be dismissed. They can be celebrated in their own right. They are archetypal. They represent our own desires, our own aspirations, indeed our own deepest sense of meaning. It isn't at all to belittle the meaning of God or the devil or any other supposedly supernatural entity to recognise that it's part of us, part of a way we're seeing the world. In fact, it makes it more powerful, more meaningful to recognise it as such. It just removes an element of delusion in the way we might otherwise be relating to it. Misconception number four, that it's possible to be religious or non-religious on the basis usually the people think that religion just consists of beliefs but being religious or non-religious in that way makes no more sense than being geographical or not being geographical religion is a dimension of human experience what people usually mean when they claim to be non-religious is that they reject religious beliefs or they deny religious beliefs. But really that doesn't take away all the other dimensions of religion from their lives. They're still gonna have morality, they're still gonna have narratives, they're still gonna have social groupings, they're still gonna have rituals, they're still gonna have experiences that might be described as religious. So it's really not that simple to be non-religious. In fact, it's impossible. A final misconception, religions have fixed identities. So Judaism is like this, Islam is like that. But that is a model which really doesn't fit religion. Religions are processes. Religions are cultural traditions. They keep changing over time. They merge into one another or they break off from one another. They have a huge complexity of identity. Above all, religions are made up of people, of groups of people working over time, turning into traditions of people. Those people relate in various fluctuating ways. And each of the individuals in that religious group, even if it consists of millions of people, 
have their own slightly different understandings of what it is they're engaged in. So it's really not that clear that their religion only consists of a particular prescribed abstract set of beliefs, however much of attempting it may be to put them in that pigeonhole. So to summarise, five common misconceptions about religion. Firstly, the belief that religions are essentially about belief. No, they're not, because religions are about a whole range of human meaning and experience, as shown in Ninian and Smart's analysis of the dimensions of religion. Second misconception, that religion is meaningless without belief. But meaning comes from our embodied experience, not from some kind of abstract relationship to a supposed reality or unreality. Thirdly, the idea that religion depends on the existence of supernatural beings. But we cannot know about the existence or non-existence of such beings, which is purely abstract and irrelevant to us. Furthermore, externalising supernatural beings is a projection of our experience, a projection of experiences that can otherwise be very important to us and should be celebrated in their own right. Fourthly, the idea that it's possible to be religious or non-religious. That makes no sense because religion is simply a dimension of human experience. It can't be turned into that kind of duality. Fifthly, the idea that religions have fixed identities. But each religion is a complex and debatable tradition. If you think you've fixed it in that way, you're probably wrong. And finally, it's our responsibility to interpret the meaning of religion helpfully. There may be a lot of debate about what each religion means. It's up to you to decide what it means in the face of that ambiguity. And that's a question of very basic moral responsibility that we have. This practical and integrative approach to religion is an application of the middle way as understood in middle way philosophy. To find out more about middle way philosophy, please see the website of the Middle Way Society, www.middlewaysociety.org.